Okay, um, welcome, Satnam. I think most of you know me. My name is Ann Taylor, and I have the pleasure of leading you in Kundalini Yoga this morning. Now, I know that we have a couple of new people to Kundalini, and so I might be giving a little bit more instruction uh, than some of the more uh, seasoned students are. So, in case you're wondering, that's why. So, we begin by waiting till nine o'clock, another minute. Uh, if you would open the chat while we have a minute and just say where you're tuning in from or chiming in from would be great. So make sure that you're hitting panelists and participants so that everybody can see. I know we've got Salt Lake City, uh, East Coast, Issaquah, so we're from all over. Cleveland. Wonderful. All right. Now, again, if you are brand new to Kundalini Yoga, feel free to just sit out any exercises you're not comfortable with and visualize. And I'll try to give you some prompts as we go. To begin, we sit on the floor or on a chair, making sure that your back is away from the chair, if that's the case. And the key point is to make sure that your hips are higher than your knees. So if you need to get a cushion, this is important because we're working on the nervous system and we want a straight spine. So this is the proper position. The hips are higher than the knees. If you are sitting up like this, which a lot of beginning students are, or even seasoned students, your spine is going to curl a little bit. So just check on that. We begin the class by tuning in with the Adi Mantra by chanting Ong Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Ong is the creative force of the unit, universe, Guru. From darkness to light, it's not about a Guru out there. We are withdrawing the projections, coming into the home of the heart, going from darkness to light. And so when we tune in, we're calling upon that energy, the universal energy, the divine, whatever you prefer to call, whatever term you're comfortable with. Something that's more infinite than, your, than yourself. That's the whole purpose of yoga, to unite your finite self with your infinite self. It is not a dogma or a religion that we are practicing here. But let's get our posture again, nice straight spine, and we'll take a couple long, deep breaths before we begin. As you begin the inhale, start your focus at your navel point. Open up the belly as you're inhaling, drawing the breath up through the heart center. Open up the rib cage and bring the breath all the way up to the collarbones. The chin is tilted forward just slightly in what's called neck lock or Jalanda bond. It's a body lock. And just imagine you have a tennis ball or an orange between your chin and your neck, and that's about the position you're going for. Your body is relaxed, but the spine is straight. And I'd like you to take a moment before we tune in to set an intention for today's class or a resolve as it's called in Yoga Nidra, which we'll be getting to later. Something you want to either dedicate your practice to today, it could be gratitude, or you can set the intention this whole month of September, we're working on anxiety relief and rebuilding the nervous system. So you might think, my intention is to heal my nervous system and set it in the body, and so it is. The mantra, the long chanting, we're going to do our chanting from our navel point. This is not about singing a song. As you know, I am not a songbird. That's it's about finding your authentic voice and resonating it out 
so your uh, body vibrates. And we'll get to why that's so important at another time. Rub the palms of the hands together, placing them at the heart center. We'll tune in with the Adi Mantra, followed by the Mantra for Protection. So we're setting up a sacred space between our ordinary day and our yoga practice. If you do not know the words to the uh, Mantra for Protection, or any of it, just let it roll past you. Just get into the vibe and listen. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Deep inhale, exhale, and inhale to tune in. Om Namo Guru Exhale, relax the hands down, keeping the eyes closed if you're comfortable doing so. And before we begin this morning's pranayama or breath work, we'll practice a minute or so of long deep breathing. And again, begin by opening up the belly, inhaling up to the collarbones. At least five seconds. Reversing the process, bringing the breath back down, pulling the navel point in slightly on the end of the exhale, keeping the inhale and exhale approximately the same. This is a foundational breath in Kundalini Yoga and other traditions. Allowing your awareness to drop out of your head, your thinking mind. Just be with your experience. We're applying conscious practice to breathing, something that is normally done without our awareness. We breathe whether we're awake, asleep, or somewhere in between. The body just automatically breathes as it does all of the other functions that happen without our conscious awareness. When we bring conscious attention to the breath, we can slow down the breath. Slowing the breath is one of the quickest ways to settle yourself from feelings of anxiousness, fear, sadness, anger, simply dropping out of the head, coming down into the heart space, and watching your breath.
We can live without food for several days. We can even live without water for a couple days. But we can't go very long without breath. And when our breath is shallow, you probably know the feeling all of a sudden you remember to breathe. It's like you haven't taken a breath for a bit. When our breathing is shallow and irregular, we're sending constant signals to the brain. We're stressed. There's a problem here. The brain releases all kinds of chemicals to counteract the perceived problem. In reality, it could be our negative mind at work. So when we breathe consciously, we are actually manipulating our nervous system into a self-regulation that sends a signal to the brain, all is well. All is well. We're under control, at least in this minute. We don't know what an hour from now is going to be like, or next week, or next year. But in this moment, I am in control, and all is well. Sending ourselves positive messages of safety. Okay, so now we are going to practice a pranayama called to tranquilize the mind. Um, another name for it is Man Suave Mudra Kriya. And actually, this was um, given to the, by the Buddha. So this is a different tradition. Of course, Buddhism is a different tradition. But Kundalini Yoga has adopted this particular yogic breathing meditation. And it's the mudra which pleases the mind. And so this is a, a good practice. We'll be doing this just for three minutes. That's what's called for. I'm, I'm trying to also interject things that you can do and have uh, resources at the tips of your finger. So in just three minutes, if you're about to head into a stressful situation, better yet, you know, start off your day with a, a few minutes to just kind of set that thermostat for the day. Okay, so there's a mudra, and that means a hand position. And I'll just come a little bit closer since I don't have a second camera person. You know, when you make the heart sign, you're going to bring your thumb tips and the index finger, the middle segment together, kind of like you're making a heart sign. And then you're going to take your middle fingers, so it looks like this. Middle fingers are touching, thumbs are touching, and the index fingers are joined like that. The mudra is placed in front of your heart center about four inches from your body. And again, if any of this, it's like if you don't quite get it, just um, don't get hung up on any one point. If you don't get the mudra, or whatever, there'll be parts, believe me, <laughs> during the class. Uh, simply do what you can do or do what you remember. The um, breath sequence is to inhale the long deep breathing that we just did as you're holding the mudra in front of your heart center, making sure the upper arms are parallel to the floor. So these are not difficult exercises, but they're precise. We're working on meridian points, and the body's inward intelligence knows what to do. You don't need to do anything, except the, um, there is a mental chant. And so the sequence, inhale, suspend the breath, and you're going to chant 11 times, or you can chant 22 times. It doesn't matter what you chant. You can chant Satnam, if you are raised in the, um, the Christian tradition, you can chant Amen, whatever, Namaste for other traditions. It doesn't really matter. Just pick a syllable. Satnam in yoga means truth is my identity or Wahe Guru. It's a feeling of ecstasy and gratitude. 
And so that is done on the suspended breath. And then you exhale the breath out long and slow. Hold the breath out and chant 11 times. Now, your breath capacity, your lung capacity is going to determine if you're able to complete 11 rounds of a chant. So I'm going to repeat this again. Inhale, suspend the breath, mentally chant something 11 times. Exhale, hold the breath out. Again, mentally chant the same thing 11 times. One more thing. The eyes are focused on the tip of the nose. That may be very uncomfortable for some of you, or you may not be able to see the tip of your nose. This is working on the optic nerve. There's a reason for all of these things we do in Kundalini Yoga. I would recommend if you can't quite see the tip of your nose, look at the tips of your middle fingers. That'll get your eyes going in the right direction. All right, we'll be doing this for three minutes. Um, this, the goal of this is to learn to kind of tranquilize yourself naturally. I'll walk us through the first round or two, and then you go at your own pace. Inhale deeply. Suspend the breath. Begin mental chant. Exhale slowly through the nose. Begin the mental chant. Inhale slowly and now go at your own pace. If the mind is wandering or resisting, simply notice and come back to the practice. Inhale deeply, relax the mudra down, allow the eyes to remain closed and breathe normally. Be with your experience.
Beautiful. And now we begin the active part of the class and we'll do the Kriya for elevation. Kriya means a set of exercises and it's a set of exercises done in a specific order. So if you find you like Kundalini practice, it's best to get a hold of the directions so that you can follow the exercises. When I'm able to, I'm posting these videos on, but quite honestly, they take longer to edit than to do the class. So sometimes they make it on, often they do not. The first exercise is called Ego Eradicator. And the ego is that portion of the, our being that we need to be in the world. It's how we present ourselves. It often can be like a two-year-old that thinks it's running the show or a five-year-old. The ego has a very important place. We are not actually trying to eradicate it. We are trying to eradicate it constantly being behind the driver's wheel. The purpose in yoga is to find that switch between operating out of our ego and then operating out of the deeper wisdom from within. Once you get it, you'll know it. And so doing things like ego eradicator, the ego is going to resist this. And so it's not physically hard, but it can be mentally challenging until there's a surrender point. And a surrender point is the switch from the ego to the higher self, where it becomes almost effortless. The mudra or hand position is to take the fingers and curl them on the pads of the hand and the thumbs are stretched out. So right on the top of the hands, if you can see that. The egos represent, the thumbs represent the ego, the Mars energy. It's all, oh, I won't get into that right now. The angle, sometimes Kundalini Yoga is called the yoga of angles. The arms are up 60 degrees. So Think about a clock, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. The shoulders are relaxed. There's no bend in the elbow. Your spine is straight and your chin is in neck lock. And now we begin a powerful breath of fire. For those students who are, are used to breath of fire, go ahead and begin. Ladies, if you are pregnant or on your early moon cycle, substitute long, deep breathing. For those of you new, breath of fire is a powerful breath, much like a dog panting. And on the exhale, you're pulling the navel point in. And then bring it up to the nose. I have a video on the website. This is very unclear. Do the best you can. Once you've got the neck, allow your eyes to gently roll up to the third eye point as if looking between the eyebrows. One more minute. If you are new and you have to just simply put your arms down, 
I would like you to continue by visualizing the exercise, but try to keep up if you're able. This opens up the lungs. We're consolidating our electromagnetic field around our body and bringing some alertness to the brain. Inhale deeply, touch the thumbs together, spread the fingers out and raise them over your head, suspend the breath. Exhale, relax the arms down. Wonderful. Just taking a few moments between exercises. The next exercise is called spinal flex, another foundational exercise in Kundalini Yoga. This works on the lower spine. We take our hands and put them on our ankles. If you are sitting in a chair, just put them on your knees. As you inhale, rock your hips forward. As you exhale, rock them back. So it's a forward and backward rocking motion. Synchronize the breath with the motion by inhaling forward, exhaling back. Make sure you're not bouncing your head up and down. The head should be relatively stationary. And let's begin. Deep breathing. If someone's in the room with you, they should be able to hear your breath as you inhale forward, exhale back. Start slowly, check out your spine, and then pick up the speed of listening to your body. This is not about what I'm doing. It's about learning to listen to your body with respect and perceiving. Kundalini is the evolutionary force of the universe. Sometimes it's thought of as a coiled serpent at the base of the spine, near the sacrum. The sacrum means holy bone. We are not attempting to raise the Kundalini in these classes. We are attempting to strengthen our nervous system so as the energies naturally release, you're better able to handle them. Everyone has a certain amount of Kundalini energy flowing through them at all times. If you follow the instructions, it's a very safe practice, but always go at your own pace. One more minute, if you're new, you may want to just sit and visualize, allowing the yoga to meet you where you're at. It's a dance. Take yourself up to the edge and no further.
Inhale deeply, suspend the breath. Apply root lock by lifting the muscles of the pelvic floor. Exhale, relax, and keep the eyes closed. The eyes are closed as much as you're comfortable doing so, unless you need to check a posture or you're listening to how to do the exercise. As much as you're able to, just allow the eyes to close. And all breathing is done through the nose unless otherwise specified. The next exercise is spinal twist. It stimulates the mid-spine. And of course, our nervous system, uh, the spinal column is a big, huge part of the nervous system. And so we're really getting some movement going in the spine with this series. And it also opens up the heart center. And we'll be doing this for three minutes. And again, do your best if you're new. And if you've been doing it a while, you know what to do. So let's begin. Thumbs are in the back, fingers are in the front, shoulders are down and relaxed. Inhale as you gently twist to the left, exhale as you twist to the right. The checkpoints are not to let the elbows droop, but keep them up, but we're not crunching our shoulders either. Inhale left, exhale right. Chin is in neck lock, spine is straight, once you've got the neck, you can begin to mentally add the chant Sat Nam. Sat on the inhale, Nam on the exhale. Sat Nam, it's a silent vibration. Truth is my identity, it's a frequency we're resonating with. Feel this heart center opening. One more minute. If you feel yourself getting dizzy at all, stop, take a couple of cleansing breaths and restart and slow it down. We carry our tension and stress in our bodies. Early childhood traumas get stuck in the body as well. And for people experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety, it's usually compounded because of things that happened earlier in our life. It's harder to just let things roll off our back. But as we practice Kundalini Yoga, Inhale, center, suspend the breath. As we practice Kundalini Yoga, we are releasing some of those tensions. Exhale, relax the hands down, keep the eyes closed. The issues are in the tissues as the saying goes. No need to complicate it beyond that. And now stretch out your legs in front of you and we'll do life nerve stretch. Inhale deeply, exhale, bending from the hips, coming down as far as you're able to. 
you're able to come down further. If your back is nice and flexible, you may be able to touch your toes. If, if you can, take your first two fingers of each hand, wrap them around the big toe, and press your thumb into the nail bed. So I don't know if that makes sense. So it's going to be like this. Wrap the two fingers around the big toe. Press your thumb into your nail bed. We're really getting down on the floor and letting go of our inhibitions here. So, And let's just begin. Long, deep breathing. On the exhale, just go down a little bit further. It doesn't matter if you, your hands are on your thighs, your knees, or your toes. We're meeting, allowing the yoga to meet us where we are. Long, deep, powerful breathing. If your mind wanders, and if it's like mine, it does, simply notice. Don't beat yourself up. It might happen every second. That gives you more opportunities to practice notice and coming back. Notice and come back. You are the observed and the observer. Letting go of any tensions you're holding. Getting the body involved, releasing past tensions and stresses. Without the brain, we're not thinking about it. We're allowing the wisdom of the body to let go now of what it no longer needs to carry around. Let it go. If the tears come at times, don't try to stop them. Let them flow. If the laughter comes, don't try to stop it. Let it flow. Inhale deeply, suspend the breath. Exhale and drop down as far as you're reasonably able to hold the breath out. Inhale and relax. The next exercise is going to call for root lock, which I mentioned briefly earlier. When I say apply root lock, root is at the base of the spine, just as it would imply that's where your roots are going into the earth. When uh, root lock is three parts, you squeeze the muscles of the anus sphincter, the sex organ, as if you're stopping a flow of urine and pulling the navel in. So it's a three-part lock. And I'm getting very specific because it's such an important lock. When we, when we pull root lock, we're holding the energy in. We're allowing the prana to come up, the apana to come up, and that's where a lot of the healing of the nervous system happens with these body locks. 
Again, neck lock is just tilting forward a little bit. Root lock, I just explained. There's going to be one more lock in this next exercise, and that is the diaphragm lock, which is only done when the breath is completely out. So diaphragm lock, it's hard to do and talk. So I'll inhale, exhale. As I'm holding the breath out, I pull the diaphragm up so that there's a V that's formed. You're sucking your, your um, abdomen in and up. You may have seen pictures of yogis where they have this uh, indentation. Um, you know, we don't need to get that drastic. We're simply pulling the abdomen in and up. And again, there's a lot being taught here, so if you don't get everything, don't worry about it. Okay, the next exercise is called Modified Maha Mudra. Now, what the heck is that? So, we're going to keep one leg out again. Keep your left leg out, and then you're going to be sitting on your right heel. If you've got knee problems, um, you can just, again, visualize. Keep both legs out, or alternatively, you can just put one leg on the side. If you're able to sit on your heel, do so. And the heel goes right into that root lock. We're really utilizing the body. We inhale, exhale, and again, bring ourselves down as far as you can, as far as you are able to comfortably, keeping the back straight as possible in this position. And we'll begin a powerful breath of fire. Again, that, that panting motion through the nose. Inhale and exhale being equal. And let's begin. In this case, the eyes are open, gazing over the toe. And your chin is a neck lock, and you're going to feel a little bit of a pull in your eyes, never to the point of hurting. Inhale deeply, suspend the breath, apply root lock. Exhale, hold the breath out, apply root lock and diaphragm lock. Inhale and switch sides. That is a little bit more difficult to get all of that together. So again, allow the yoga to meet you where you're at. Okay, we're going to do the same process on the opposite side. Taking a deep breath, exhaling forward, chin lock. Eyes are open in this case again, gazing over the big toe. 
and begin a powerful breath of fire. And again, ladies, if you are pregnant or early moon cycle, always substitute long deep breathing. One more minute. As the mind wanders, again, simply notice and draw your attention back to the breath. Inhale, suspend the breath, apply root lock. Exhale, relax, hold the breath out. Again, apply root lock and diaphragm lock. Inhale and spread your legs wide for life nerve stretch. It's more important that the back of the legs are on the floor than how wide you go out. Flex the toe, the feet so that um, so they're not pointed, they're straight up. Inhale, center, exhale to the left. Inhale, up, exhaling to the right. If you're more flexible than I am and can keep your hands on your toes, do so. Otherwise, just switch. Synchronize the breath and the motion. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And now go at your own pace. If you're comfortable doing so, keep your eyes closed, focused inside. This exercise charges the magnetic field around you. And works on the lower spine and sacrum area. The electromagnetic field in yoga is called the aura. It's nothing more woo woo than an electromagnetic field. Very, very dynamic. And 
Now inhale, center and exhale, center. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale deeply, suspend the breath. Exhale down to your maximum position and hold the breath out. Excellent. Inhale and come lying on your stomach. Arms are out to your sides. And just breathe normally for a few moments before we begin Cobra. And once again, if you are visualizing the class, you will be sitting in your chair or in easy pose and just following my voice with your eyes closed. Placing your hands now underneath the shoulders, forehead is on the floor. Inhale up into Cobra as best you can, planting the hips firmly into the mat and begin a powerful breath of fire. Ideally, the hand should be under the shoulders. I have to modify the position myself. Inhale and carefully come back down and turn over, coming into an easy pose position as gracefully as possible. Okay. And now we'll begin shoulder shrugs. Well, before I jump on, just the cobra helps to balance the sexual energy, draws the prana, the life force energy, to balance the apana, the illuminating force, and allows the kundalini energy that normally circulates within everyone up into the higher centers. And now the shoulder shrugs balances the upper chakras, so that's the, from the, um, the neck up. And so we do this simply by inhaling both shoulders up and exhaling down. Inhale up, exhale down. Again, allow the eyes to close, focus at the brow point. This is also opening the hormonal gate to the higher brain centers. So something so simple as this and have quite a bit of internal effects. And again, we're doing them in a sequence so that it's first of all safe, 
and the energy flows in a specific order. Inhale, both shoulders up, suspend the breath. Exhale and relax. And now we'll begin neck rolls. Start with small circles. We're going to just be rolling our head. But start small and then broaden out as your, your neck muscles are nice and strong. You can make big circles. Tuning into your body, just checking in, seeing how big the circles should be. And switching directions. And inhale center. The final exercise is called Sat Kriya. And if you're able to sit on your heels, do so. If you need to sit at the edge of a chair, that is fine. Or if you, if you need to remain in easy pose, you can do that as well. The mudra is to interlace the fingers and then extend the index finger. And the thumbs are crossed. For ladies, the left thumb is over the right, men is reversed. So that's the mudra. The mantra is Sat Nam. On the Sat, pull the navel point in. On the Nam, relax the navel. So it'll be Sat Nam, Sat Nam. Raising the arms, the Arms are hugging the ears. Try to relax the shoulders down a little bit. Chin is in neck lock. We'll chant this out loud, and the actual vibration of your chanting is very healing. So let's begin. Please follow my lead. Sut nam, sut nam, sut nam, sut nam, sut nam, sut. Na sat 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 nam 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 sat Na 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 sat 
नाम सत 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 नाम इन हेल्थी प्ले सस्पेंड द ब्रेथ अप्लाई रूट लॉक and press the energy from the base of the spine up to the crown spiraling if you can three and a half times around the spine exhale again inhale deeply suspend the breath apply root lock and imagine the energy coming from the base of the spine spiraling three and a half times and going up to the crown Excellent. Exhale. Relax your arms down through your auric field and come lying down for deep relaxation. I will remain seated and hold the space. And read to you. We're going to be doing a yoga nidra. So this is not the time to go to the restroom or get a drink of water unless it's absolutely necessary because this is where you're harvesting your hard work. Don't miss, don't miss this part. The body will make its subtle adjustments to the nervous system, which in turn adjusts the hormonal, the immune system, all the body systems kind of make their adjustments. The arms are out to the side, the palms are up, and your eyes are closed. Yoga Nidra is a yogic sleep. We are not going to sleep. You simply follow my voice. Become aware of your body and relax yourself completely. Make yourself physically calm and steady. Feel that the legs are relaxed, the trunk, the head, the arms and hands. Develop the awareness of your physical body right from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and in your mind. Just chant Om. complete awareness of the whole body. Again, say to yourself, Om. Relax your whole body mentally. Relax yourself mentally. Relax yourself by breathing normally and becoming aware of the breath as it moves between the navel and throat. Awareness of your natural breath, no forcing. Navel to throat breathing. Please go on with this awareness and slowly feel yourself becoming more relaxed. Now leave your breathing and become aware that you are going to practice yoga nidra. Yoga Nidra begins now. Recalling the intention that you set at the beginning of the class, bring it into your awareness now.
awareness of the parts of the body. The consciousness should move around the body and keep on moving. As it moves, it changes into prana, the vital energy, in the form of a current of energy. Do not concentrate any one part, but let your mind jump freely from one part to the next. Right hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, palm, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, right thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, right toes, one, two, three, four, five, left hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, left thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, left toes, one, two, three, four, five. Go to the right toes and start from the bottom. Right big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth, top of the foot, sole, heel, ankle, calf muscle, kneecap, thigh, hip, waist, armpit, shoulder, upper arm, elbow, lower arm, wrist, back of the hand, palm of the hand, right thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, go to the left toes, left big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth, top of the foot, sole, heel, ankle, calf, kneecap, thigh, hip, waist, armpit, shoulder, upper arm, elbow, upper arm, lower arm, wrist, back of the hand, palm of the hand, left thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth. Go to the back of the body. Go to the back of the head where it touches the floor. Back of the head, right shoulder blade, left shoulder blade, whole spine, right hip, left hip, right buttocks, left buttocks, back of the right thigh, back of the left thigh, back of the right knee, back of the left knee, right calf muscle, left calf muscle, right ankle, left ankle, right heel, left heel, right ankle, left ankle, right calf muscle, left calf muscle, back of the right knee, back of the left knee, back of the right thigh, back of the left thigh, right buttocks, left buttocks, right hip, left hip, whole spine, right shoulder blade, 
left shoulder blade, back of the head. Go to the front of the body. Go to the top of the head. Top of the head. Forehead. Right eyebrow. Left eyebrow. The space between the eyebrows. Right eyelid. Left eyelid. Right eye. Left eye. Right ear. Left ear. Right nostril. Left nostril. Right cheek left cheek, upper lip, lower lip, chin, jaw, throat, right collarbone, left collarbone, right chest, left chest, middle of the chest, navel, upper abdomen, lower abdomen, right groin, left groin, right thigh, left thigh, right knee, left knee, right toes, left toes. Bring your attention to the natural quiet breath. Become aware of your breath through your nostrils. The natural breath throws, flows through both nostrils. And as you begin to become aware of your breath, gently bring your awareness back into the room. Begin making circles with your wrists and ankles. Stretching your arms now out over your head, reaching the wall behind you, pointing your toes and stretching the spine completely. And now bringing your arms out to the side for cat stretch. Bringing one knee across your body and turning your head the opposite way. And switching sides. And now rub the palms of your hands and soles of your feet briskly, stimulating the 72,000 nerve endings. Grabbing hold of the knees, rock on your spine a couple times. And come sitting with the eyes closed. in a meditative state. Allowing the breath to just go natural, finding its own rhythm. Taking a few moments to feel gratitude for your practice today. Knowing that at any time during the course of the day, with feelings of anxiousness or fear or overwhelm start to creep in. Remember my voice, 
simply notice and come back to your breath, whether you're on or off the mat. Slowly, slowly, building up self-mastery over the conditions that we have no control over by simply noticing and coming back to the breath. And we end each class with a long Sat Nam. Again, Sat Nam. Truth is my identity. When we chant the long Sat, it's a long tonal exhale. We are stimulating the vagus nerve, the nerve of compassion, the central tuning string of the body. So please do indeed belt it out from the navel point. If there are people in the house that think it's strange, don't worry, they'll get used to it. Come on now. <laughs> All right, inhale deeply. Exhale. And inhale to close. So. Thank you for joining. I wish you a wonderful day.